So the state of California is pushing the Ninth Circuit to vacate the Judge Benitez ruling on the California assault weapons ban and for the case to start over once again from scratch. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you believe the California's ban on so-called assault weapons is a violation of the Second Amendment, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Arms List. Arms List is the top website to go to if you're looking in your local area for deals, or you can shop nationwide through their 1300 FFL dealers that they have on their network. Beyond just being an awesome site for deals, Arms List also is involved in multiple lawsuits against various government agencies and groups that want to infringe on our Second Amendment rights. In fact, Arms List has a legal defense fund that they utilize to engage in these critical lawsuits. So I highly recommend that you check out Arms List if you're looking for good deals. And also if you are interested, I will leave a link down below to Arms List and their legal defense fund, where you can check that out, check out the cases they're involved in, and also donate if you're interested. So like I said in the intro, the state of California has just filed a motion in the Ninth Circuit Miller v. Bonta California assault weapons ban case. In their motion, the state of California is opposing the request by FPC to lift the stay on the Benitez ruling and order, but also in their motion, the state of California is requesting that the Ninth Circuit vacate that Judge Benitez ruling and to remand the case back down to him. And this would essentially just lead to a rehearing completely of the case and starting the case back at square one. This motion by the state of California is an effort to stall this case out as long as possible by asking the Ninth Circuit to completely force the case to restart once again. Now, for those not aware, Miller v. Bonta, prior known as Miller v. Becerra, is a challenge to the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons. Under California Penal Code Section 30515, the state of California bans various types of firearms based on their characteristics. For example, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle with a detachable magazine cannot have a flash hider, a collapsible stock, a forward vertical grip, and other features as well. If it does, then it is defined as a so-called assault weapon. The Miller case was originally heard in the Southern District of California before Roger T. Benitez, or St. Benitez, as he's known in the state of California. In reaching his decision, Judge Benitez used a standard review, which was just affirmed by the Supreme Court. He looked at the text of the Second Amendment and the history of our nation to determine that the state's ban on these types of firearms is unconstitutional he determined that the ban is not in line with the text or history of the Second Amendment. In his ruling, he stated, a ban on modern rifles has no historical pedigree. Prior to the 1990s, there was no national history of banning weapons because they were equipped with furniture like pistol grips, collapsible stocks, flash hiders, flare launchers, or barrel shrouds. In fact, prior to California's 1989 ban, so-called assault weapons were lawfully manufactured, acquired, and possessed throughout the United States. Now, after he struck down the California assault weapons ban in his ruling, he did issue a temporary stay on his own order and it was set to terminate in 30 days. The temporary stay was essentially in place for the state of California to seek a permanent stay from the Ninth Circuit and also to seek an appeal. Well, of course, the state of California did appeal this decision up to the Ninth Circuit and also they sought an emergency stay and they were granted both by the Ninth Circuit. Then the Miller case was put on hold because of a backlog of cases which were waiting on the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin decision that needed to be issued by the Supreme Court. Well, just a few weeks ago, the Supreme Court issued that ruling and they struck down the Ninth Circuit's use of the two-step approach and also affirmed text as informed by history as the correct constitutional analysis when you're looking at these Second Amendment violations. In reaction to that decision, FBC through outside counsel, including John Dillon, who is a friend of the channel, uh, George Lee and Eric Jaffe, filed a motion to lift the Ninth Circuit stay on Judge Benitez's ruling. The main argument in that motion was to lift the stay that the Ninth Circuit had on the purchase and possession of these so-called assault weapons, to lift that stay on the Judge Benitez ruling, and also to affirm his ruling down below, essentially saying that, yes, he got it right the first time. We don't need to have the whole appeal on this case. We are going to lift the stay and say, yes, Judge Benitez got it right. But in the alternative, they said if the Ninth Circuit didn't want to do that, if they didn't want to lift the stay or to reaffirm the Judge Benitez ruling, they needed to expedite the hearing of this case. Well, the state of California is now opposing that motion to lift the stay, and instead they are pushing the Ninth Circuit to vacate the judgment of Judge Benitez down below and to remand the case back down to him and to completely restart this case in light of the Bruin decision. In their motion, the state of California argues, in light of Bruin, this court should vacate the district court's judgment and remand this case to the district court for further proceedings. Plaintiffs challenge important provisions of California's Assault Weapons Control Act, a statute that has been in place for more than three decades and is a critical part of California's efforts to protect its residents from the deadly effects of gun violence. But the parties briefed and the district court principally resolved this case under the two-step framework that was the prevailing approach for scrutinizing Second Amendment claims before Bruin. 
vacating and remanding would allow the parties to compile the kind of historical record that Bruin requires and would allow the district court to answer a number of important questions about how Bruin should be applied in future cases. So there the state of California is pushing the Ninth Circuit to send this case back down to Judge Benitez and for the case to be completely redone in light of Bruin. They are saying that this should be done to develop the historical evidence in Bruin, but in the very same motion, they also recognize that Benitez in his original order did take into account the text and history of these types of restrictions. In fact, he may have even isolated his order to just text as informed by history, but the issue was that the Ninth Circuit and their two-step approach essentially forced him to also consider the ban in light of the two-step approach. So he really did a combination of both things. He did what's called, he called the Heller test, which really was text as informed by history, but he also looked at this ban in the state of California using the two-step approach. And using both of these tests, his Heller test and also the two-step approach, he found that this ban in the state of California is unconstitutional. However, the state of California is almost arguing, well, we didn't put forward all the historical evidence we had to justify this ban because we were focused on the two-step approach. Therefore, they want this case to be remanded back down to him so that they can try to meet their burden of justifying that this ban has a history or tradition in our nation. In their motion, they state in the proceedings below, the parties focused on whether the challenge provisions of the AWCA were constitutional under the prevailing two-step framework for analyzing Second Amendment claims. And the district court principally resolved this case on that basis. The new text and history standard redirects the Second Amendment inquiry and places the burden squarely on the government to identify an American tradition justifying the challenge regulation. Neither the parties nor the district court had the benefit of Bruin during the proceedings below. And while the district court briefly reviewed some of the history relevant to the question presented here, it did so without the benefit of Bruin, which clarified the historical inquiry that the lower court must conduct in important ways. The state of California then argues that the court should remand this case Miller like they did in other cases Rupp, McDougal, and Villanueva, and that the plaintiffs have not shown why this case is any different from those cases and shouldn't also be remanded. But the reality is that the plaintiffs here have done that. The difference with the Benitez ruling in Miller is that he did use text as informed by history to reach his ruling. Those other cases didn't. It's almost like Benitez knew that this was coming, so he hedged his bet using both of those tests. So this is essentially the state of California trying to stall this case out as long as possible because they know that the new law is not in their favor. If the Ninth Circuit grants this, if they vacate and remand this case back down to Judge Benitez, that would be the worst case scenario because this would drag the case out so much longer, it would create a longer process and almost completely restart this case at the district court level. Now in the alternative, the state of California is hedging their bets as well, requesting that if the Ninth Circuit denies that, if they deny the vacate and remand, then they should at least deny the stay, they should not lift that stay and also they should not expedite this case. So again, they are trying to stall this case out however long they can. So ultimately, this is really important what the Ninth Circuit decides to do. This is really the entire battle. This will determine whether or not this ban stays in place for years to come, if this case is gonna be drug out for many more years, or if maybe this ban will be done away with in just a few months. So if we get any more information, I will let you all know. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So again, thank you so much for all of your support. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.